Our guest is Benjamin Botson. Welcome. Thank you. He's Belgian, studied in Sweden and UK, and will soon marry an Austrian in France. So he's very European. Benjamin, did you feel the you while studying in the UK? Well, when I was studying in the UK, um, it was always funny to hear people saying, ah, oh, you in Europe, and say, well, well guys, 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 you are in Europe as well here. But what I could see, although I, I arrived in the UK with this cliche that all the British were against the EU, I could see that actually, no, the, the Brits do, do question the EU, do invest the EU, do, do maybe try to find all the ways that the EU should follow than the ones that it follows for the moment. So from British people, you could actually get a very, very good reasoning and very good ideas for a better Europe. This is one of my fear that if we lose the UK, we lose this kind of big um, laboratory of ideas that, that the UK is, in my opinion. Yeah, we are talking a lot about Brexit and it's uh, most, uh, I guess, the one of the topics most discussed right now in Europe. Uh, do you think that would, would Europe, what would uh, Europe lose if Brexit happened? So I think more to, to just to, to tell, because I could tell you a lot about, about this, what, what both parts would lose. But what the, I think the Europe would lose is somehow the credibility. Because if one state leaves the EU, then it's, for me, the door is open for other states to go. We see all these people who won referendums in other, in other uh, member states. We have heard about Nexit, this guy, Geert Wilders in the Netherlands, who wanted to organize a referendum as well about the, uh, the membership of the Netherlands. Uh, I think it would be a very bad message to show Although we, we, we thought since the World War II that European integration would go always to more integration, this would be actually the start of disintegration and, and, and maybe not the, the best way that we should follow for the moment, which is that we should be united. Taking, uh, talking about changes, the motto of the European YAF Media Days is uh, together we can make a change. What kind of change does the European Union need at and how can young people influence this type of changes? I, I really think that the EU needs a complete change of narrative uh, because what the EU is telling today is an EU that doesn't speak to young people anymore. Uh, young people take the EU for granted, which is a mistake, I think, because we, we see today that war could happen anywhere, even in Europe. Um, but what young people should do is try to reinvest, like engage in the EU and give the EU the sense they want the EU to have. The people who are dealing with all the communication of the EU are people who do not, not, do not know necessarily how the youth likes to communicate, what kind of channels do they use. Obviously they do, they do research about it, they are very interested to know about it, but I think still the message doesn't reach it, the people, it doesn't reach the young people. Um, so in this, I think this should be completely rethought in a way that young people would feel more interested to, to engage. I think if we have young candidates that try to bring the entourage and all the youth together on problems that concern the youth specifically, then we could maybe change the representativity of the population that is in this room. Thanks. Thank you very much for, for your Thanks to you. being here. Thank you for the invitation.